Okay, so the video will start with just the full solution showing on the video. Unfortunately, me working it through won't be on there. Okay. Now this last one, I've got this trough, this cross section is based on x equals, or y equals 1, Is it water? Is it filled all the way up? Trough is full. Okay. okay, so something like this. It's full with water. And this right here is y equal minus y equals x to the one eighth. Or x to the eighth. So Actually, when I first did this problem yesterday, before class, I put the origin here. Or, did I do that? Yeah, I put, I put the origin up here at the top. But I think it's perfectly valid and maybe a little easier to put the origin here. There's, there's trade-offs both ways, right? So um, Wherever you put the origin, there'll be a more easy part of the problem and a more difficult part, and that, that kind of there's a trade-off there. So we'll just go with the origin right here. So we're interested in getting all this water out of the trough. So what is going to be our element for which we're able to calculate a little bit of work? So what will the element be like? that will be able to calculate the amount of work. It'd be a horizontal like wafer, right? Like a, a slice, a horizontal slice will be a rectangular. I'll do it in red. It'd be rectangular, right? So it'll be something like this. So we want to calculate the work to get that thing out, because we can do that, and then we're going to integrate all those slices that are changing. Okay? So the work, again, will be force times distance. All right, and so what is the force required to move that thing up? It's weight, okay? So um, every cubic foot is 62 pounds. So we need the total number of pounds that this thing is. So how will we get the total number of pounds of that? Yeah, it would be volume times 62. And that will be the force, because pounds is force. So these, uh, often in these English units problems you have one less step because it's just giving you the pound the pound density the, the, the weight density whereas in the, the metric ones they give you sometimes they give you the mass density and you have to multiply by 9.8 right so there's like one less step in these English unit problems okay so you got we're getting the volume and then what about the distance we have to move that thing so this is where it Setting it up this way is takes a little more, a uh, little bit tough, trickier. Okay, so this this right here is what's the coordinates of that point right there? That's one one, right? So this level right here is not zero. So we're used to having that be zero. Well, now it's one. Y equals one. So how far does that red slice have to move? How far do we have to move it to get it out the trough? Okay, so it's going to be this far right here. Some people are saying it. So it's going to be this far. We've got to move it this far. That's the distance from y up to 1. How far is it from y up to 1? Some people said before, that's 1 minus y. That's how far. 
Final, final location minus initial location, right? 1 minus y is the distance we're going to have to move that thing through. Okay, so now what's the volume of this? The volume of this here is length times width times height. The height is delta y. The length, it tells me my length is 10 there in my problem. The width, what's the width of this thing, right? What is that width right there? Two. Two. So this is from here to here is the x coordinate. So all the way from here to here would be 2x. Do you see that that's 2x? But our problem, we're doing it in terms of y, so we need x in terms of y, which is? We need to solve x in terms of y, so it would be 2y to the 1 8. So the width is going to be 2y to the 1 8. Did you catch it? So we got everything we need. There's the volume. Times 62 gives us the weight of that in pounds, which is the force we need. And then 1 minus y is the distance through which we need to move it, which gives us the work to move that layer. Uh, how did you get y again? How did I get y? What do you mean? So y is so Because this, the, the equation that defines the trough is y equals x to the eighth. So therefore, x is y to the 1 eighth. I need x in terms of y. So I need to solve this for, for x. OK, so we're going to go uh, volume. It's going to be the volume is 10 times 2y to the 1 eighth. We'll put the dy at the end. And that's the volume times 62 times 1 minus y, the distance. So that's a little bit of work or the work needed for that layer. Okay, and so then what's the first layer to the last layer that we need? This is so the, the the directions of the limits are always a little confusing. Should it be 0 to 1 or 1 to 0? Positive. Got it. So what was your reasoning behind that, Adam? Why did you think it should be 0 to 1? Uh, we said that our distance is starting at uh, 1, and we made it 1 minus y. OK. So if you integrate from starting at 0, since the distance is 1 minus y, it would be 1 minus 0, which would be 1, which is at the top of the trough. And then as you go up, it kind of it's an inverse of each other. So, every, so this so y equals zero to one would be integrating the, this would be first, and this would be then the top would be last, right? Right, but if you use the reasoning that we, we chose our distance as one minus y, yeah, when you start at y equals zero, it, it would be one minus zero, so that would be the distance that it has to go one minus zero. Right. But I mean, why? But I, I guess I'm not sure. Why is it not this? I mean, 
Because then this would be saying, just take this one first, and then go down this way. I think we'd have to change the one line slide when we do that. Okay. Anyway. So let's just make sure that's right. Five, I got 518.384. Okay, and then evaluating this by hand, you would have to distribute. So this times 1, that's easy, y to the 1 eighth. And then you distribute this times minus y. That would be minus y to the 9 eighths, right? And you could do it. So you just have to distribute. And you have two terms. Both terms are easy, okay? So it's still, it's still an easy integral. It's just you have to split it up into two. Questions on this example? Did it help? Okay, what about from the book? No truck. No truck? No truck. Okay, last chance for questions on the trough. Okay, so the milk truck. So those problems, the problems that we just did have to do with like work, the work to lift something out, right? And so that is work equals force times distance. And the force required to lift something is its weight, okay? So this force is weight force, and then the distance that we have to lift it, push up against its weight, times that weight force gives us the amount of work. So in these problems, we're talking about something different. This is hydrostatic force, or the force um, pushing against uh, an object or a plate um, underneath, underwater, under a fluid, okay? So that is pressure times area. So the deeper you go under a fluid, the more pressure is exerted, okay? And obviously, the, the bigger the area is that, that where pressure is being exerted, the more the force will be as well, okay? So this is hydrostatic force, And all the problems that we saw with this work, this was like weight force, right? Weight force. And so we were lifting something. So we're lifting it up a distance, and that force we had to apply was its weight, so that gave us work to lift something. This is hydrostatic force, uh, meaning... The deeper that you go, the more force there is because of all the water, the weight of the water above. Okay, but then that pushes in all directions, right? That, that pressure pushes in all directions. Okay, so we're gonna do the, the milk truck then is okay, and is it totally full? Okay, so. Don't drink blue milk. But we'll just get we get the idea here. So it, that's filled up all the way to the top. Okay, so how does the so we're talking about the pressure then on this vertical circular end of the tank. So tell me about the pressure, just in general, what is the pressure like on this? Is it constant everywhere? No, that's why we have to integrate. If it were constant everywhere, we would just, boom, pressure times pi r squared, be done, right? But it changes. How does the pressure change? Right, so 
down here, all the all the milk above is pushing down on on the milk down here, causing pressure. So you get greater pressure as you go down. And then conversely, what kind of pressure do you have up here? Less until what about right there? So pressure equals zero. And here, pressure is maximum. So again, we have to decide where we're going to put our axes, where we're going to put our origin. And there's trade-offs, right? If you, if you put it one place, it makes one part of the problem easy and another part of the part more difficult. And so, so I think with circuit, circle problems, I guess maybe let's, let's put the origin right in the middle of the circle, okay? That's going to help us with the circle equation. But then other things we'll have to, there's a trade-off for other things. But let's, let's just go ahead and put the origin right in the middle of the circle. Okay, and so then we need the equation of this circle. So what's the equation of this circle? The diameter is 6. So the radius is? Three, and since we put the origin in the middle, we got x squared plus y squared equals nine. Okay, so what's going to be the typical elements for which we'll be able to calculate the hydrostatic force, right? The problem is what? That as we go up and down, pressure changes. So what will be the typical element for which we'll be able to Calculate, you know, a, an amount of force. What's that? He wants something horizontal. Yeah, so if we pick a horizontal layer, then at a horizontal layer, the pressure is all the same there. So I'll just pick up here. Let's do this one right here. So we want... The force that the milk exerts on the tank, just on that little strip right there. So we want to calculate a little bit of force, right? A little change in force. And that's going to be pressure times area. So pressure is rho g D, and if this is English units, we know that that rho G will just have. We won't, that will be just one value. If it's metric units, we might be given this mass density and need to multiply by G. I think I said yesterday this was force, rho G yesterday. That's not force. Okay? That's uh, weight density. Okay? It's weight density. All right, so is this English or metric? English, 64.6 pounds per foot cubed. That's what that rho g is, 64.6. Okay, what is D? So what is the depth of this thing, right? If, if delta x. No, I'm, that delta x has to do with the area of this thing. The depth is from where pressure is zero. This is the depth. This is D right here. So let's maybe let's come back to that. Let's do the area first and come back to that so we know where our bearings are. So we got 64.6 D times, let's do the area. So the area of this thing is what? In general? Area, just loose, just real length times width, right? Length, length times height. What's the height? Delta Y. And also, what's the length of this thing? From here to here. Two times. Start off as easy as you can. That's just 2 times x, right? That's 2x, since we saw that in the previous problem. The distance from here out to here is x. 
coordinates at this point are x, y on our circle. So that whole width is 2x. But we, need, we know we're going to end up doing this in terms of y, so we need x in terms of y, which is? We'll get that from here, right? Square root of? So there is our area of that slice of milk. So it'll be in here. Two times. Questions on the area. So all that's left now is the depth, right? So we know that we need that depth in terms of y, because there's going to be delta y. So we need that, that depth right there, that distance. It's going to be the depth of our typical slice of milk. So what is it? This is at height y, and what is this? What height is this? That's 3, right? That's 3, and this is y. So it's going to be 3 minus y is the depth. Times the area. So that's the force on that typical horizontal slice of milk. Okay, so we're ready to set it up, and all that's left is the limits. So we got 64.6 times 3 minus y times 2 times square root of 9 minus y squared dy. Okay, now the limits. From what to what? So now this is y. What is y? Y goes from? Yeah, so the, the, this lowest slice here would be negative 3 up to 3. So the first, the first slice, like this red slice, occurs at negative 3. And then the last one occurs at 3. And we've got our pressure. This is the pressure right here. Weight density times depth times the area of the slice. Width times height. OK, to do this integral by hand, you're going to have to distribute. You have two different terms. The first term will just have three times the square root term. You can use a table. That's a good table one. Okay. The second term will be minus y times this. And how would we do that? Undoing chain, right? Because this has this y squared inside. Its derivative is y to the first. So when you multiply by 3, you could use a table. And then when you multiply by minus y, you can undo the chain rule. Questions on the milk truck? Ask if you're not sure. It's okay. When we're doing this, we can take like the 64.6 and use it like as a constant. Yeah, any constants that are multiplied always can come out in front of the integral, sure. Always. So that 2, the 64.6. Yep. Questions on the setup? Okay, so what if you, uh, how many people did not finish 34? Don't be shy. You're not, be, not able to finish or be confident about 34. Let's, try, let's take some time to work on that some more. So work together. Now that I've done this one, 
I think you can do better on 34. So let's take some time to work on 34 and see if you can have more success than you would be able to do. Page 411. I have some, some older work that I never turned back to. It actually pertains to exam one. So definitely don't let this distract you when you're working. Okay, so for those who don't have their book, let me just put it up there. Oh. I guess it was hot in here earlier. Do you like the breeze? I didn't realize. Is it good? Okay. I didn't even know that was happening. This is the side of a dam. The height of the dam is 12 meters. The water level is all but to two meters. And there's a gate down here. And you want to find the hydrostatic force against the gate. So we're in meters, so your uh, your gamma is a thousand. No, rho. Rho is a thousand kilogram per meter cube. Sure. So find the total force on the dam gate.
감사하는 Okay, so what's the equation of the circle? Uh, equals what? Two squared. Four. So again, you could put, there's different places you can choose to put the origin. I think when circles are involved, let's put the origin, you know, your reference point at the center of the circle. I think that's a good kind of consistent way to approach ones that have circles. Um, but it's also possible you could you could do it by putting the origin here. And then, you know, if you're interested, we could work through that maybe another time. And I'm happy to go through that with you. But we'll put the origin here like I'm showing here. Okay? So what's going to be the element, the typical element for which we'll calculate force? How would you just, how are you, are you orienting or creating a typical element that will be able to get a little bit of force, delta F? Pressure. Pressure. Okay, it will be pressure times area, but what elements, what geometric element will we be able to do this for? Okay, what kind of rectangle? Horizontal, right? It's got to be at a one particular depth. If your element spans different depths, that you can't do it because the pressure changes. So we need something where the pressure is constant. So like that, okay? Or down here, it'd be like this. Okay, so pressure. Pressure is rho g d, right? And here's where we need to actually multiply by g, right? So it's gonna be a thousand times 9.8. And we'll come back to D. Let's do the area first and come back to D. So that's the pressure. And the area is length times width, right? So the area is going to be length times height. The height is delta, delta Y. What's our length? 2X. X equals? That's the area of your elements. That's the area of your elements on the damn gate. You can laugh. <laughs> 2 times square root of 4 minus y squared delta y. Okay, so we need the depth in terms of y. What's the depth of our element as a function of y, which... This is our y-axis, here is y equals zero, right? So how deep is it? So is it, are we going to go from here? No, we mean the depth of, in the water. So from here to here is the depth of our element. So what level is this above our x-axis, or our y equals zero? Is that 10? And this is at height 
Is it 10 minus y? I think it's 10 minus y. Let's just go ahead and switch this step right here to the integral. Okay, the last thing is the limits of integration. So y from what to what? Zero to two. Zero to two. The first, the first layer for the force will be there at y equals zero, and the last will be up here at two. Is that what you got, you guys? Questions, how do we do? I'm sorry? Two to zero. So this is the question. So what? So yeah, so what? I don't really know how to how to explain if it should be zero to two or two to zero. I really don't. But all, we know that if, if we've done it right, the amount of force is going to be positive, right? So if you try it one way and you get, you know, joint, switching the limits of integration just takes the opposite of your integral. So if you happen to switch these and you get a, you get a negative number, then you just take the opposite. And everything else is correct, the opposite will be the answer, okay? So what, does, two to, does zero to two give a negative or a positive? Does anyone do it yet? Positive. It's positive zero to two? Okay, so we're okay. But I, I've, I've thought about this and I just, I really, I don't know how to, to give you a consistent way to know I think every single time we've done it, it's been the lower value of y to the higher value of y. So we'll just stick with that because it's worked every time. Okay? Questions on this one? Okay, let me, if you have not discovered yet, let me just show you the review outline. Last chance, questions? So I posted this last night, if you haven't discovered it yet. This just is like concepts and skills. So this is all stuff we emphasized in class. There's nothing on the exam that we didn't emphasize in class in terms of the examples I did in class and the homework I signed, okay? So there's nothing, there's nothing outside of what we really worked hard on that you have to learn, okay? So this is kind of the aspects of area that we talked about. I'm not gonna read them, but you can read it. And then this is the aspects of volume that we, in the examples that we found. Arc length, uh, remember I spent time, I spent a little bit of time in class to do this easy derivation of the formula for arc length, that you're responsible for that. So in terms of developing that, that integral formula, that, that it's, it's very doable and, and we took 10 minutes to do it in class, so make sure you know that. And then using the formula and doing the applications. And then with physics applications, we did work to stretch a spring Lift to lift or remove a rope or chain, empty a tank, and total hydrostatic pressure. Those are the types of examples we focused on. But uh, on the exam, it's going to be variations. It's going to be different contexts applying these principles. Okay, so applying these same principles to a new context or contexts. Yes, sir. So it's going to be part, it's partially. It's. Uh, Maybe like before, like half to three quarters multiple choice, and then the rest written. So it's similar, similar breakdown to what we had before. Other questions about the exam? Okay, and then I also posted. Let's see, get back here. I also posted some practice problems, review problems. This is page four twenty two. 
Okay, so this is not a practice exam. These are just the practice problems that would most uh, correlate, correlate most closely to the material that we did. Okay, so those are all good practice problems, um, but it's, it's not a, an exam of different numbers. Okay, but uh, like I said, there's nothing on the exam that we didn't um, emphasize in class. We spent time emphasizing and working hard on the class. Okay, any questions about the exam? Okay, so if you want to um, have a study session for half an hour, I'm happy to stick around and help you and then do some, maybe after you work on some, also do some more examples if you want to work on these or continue working on the homework that was due for tonight. I know it was a little bit longer. Um, so I'm here to assist you to get ready for the exam. So. I have an extra book too. Anyone wants to book? Does anybody not have a book that's for Make sure you get back to yeah, we did. Yeah, so that's where you can but that's so that's less important than this exam. Because now we're about to have a more than we are. Before, first exam was more about using the techniques. This has much more emphasis now on setting them up. But you do have to you know, still watch all this all day. But I'll leave that to keep you raised there. Now you can keep it would you rather keep it? Study with? Oh, yeah. Keep it. And then you turn it in tomorrow for credit? You turn in the written homework tomorrow so you get credit on it and you keep it stuck.